Here at Cartoon Universe, we love all things that Steven and the Crystal Gems find themselves getting involved in. So when we found out that there was going to be a new Steven Universe card game coming this summer, we got really excited. Lucky for us, we managed to get our hands on an advanced copy of the game to show all of you. So let's open the box, take a look at what's inside, and try playing this awesome new game. Hey everyone, today Deep Ken and I are going to be playing and unboxing the Beach of Palooza card battling game uh, that CryptoZo was so nice to send us. We got an early copy. It doesn't come out till this summer, I believe. And so we are going to check it out, be the first ones to talk about it, and give a little review after. Cool, so you ready to start unboxing this? Absolutely. You want to um, read off part of the back? Yeah, so join the battle of the Stevens. After this year's Beach of Palooza, Steven has a surefire way to win. Recruit more Stevens from the timeline and have them all front their own band. This is your chance to become a Steven and try to put together the best band and audience, but it's not going to be easy. Party Crashers, Corrupted, and Homeworld Gems want to ruin your amazing performance. It's Beach City's event of the year and you're on center stage. Play your cards right and your band might be the big winner. It's so quite an interesting episode to choose. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but very fun. It makes sense though, because uh, everyone's a Steven, you know? Yeah, interesting. We're all gonna be... Okay, yeah, so we can play with two to six players, so we got two. So we, we, we're fine, and it should take about an hour or so. It's and we are at least ten years yeah. old, so that works too. Yeah. So yeah, it's a fun game. Looks like it's, uh, honestly, if it says ten and up, it's for a little bit older, so maybe we'll, uh, you know, it's not like for six-year-olds. Yeah. So <laughs> who knows yeah. what we'll see. You wanna... Yeah. Sure. A second. Okay, so this is very sturdy box. So inside, you can see. Yeah. It has the whole Steven Universe. Ah, uh, so if I'm not mistaken, effect. I think the effect is supposed to be a uh, line teleporting. Mm, there we yeah, go. That's what it looks that's like. Oh, the stars. Yeah. So. And around the box, we got some cool corrupted gems or oh, just regular awesome. gems. Yeah, we really want to tilt that up. For ah, this. okay. Look at those corrupted gems. It's and they're all mixed together, so like the art style is very cohesive. We even got Jasper in there, the big bird, all sorts. Oh, look, there's Topaz. But one cool thing that uh, I want to mention is that uh, special thanks. We're we're there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's cool. That's amazing. I know, right? We're famous. We're gonna be. If anyone gets this game, whenever it comes out. Uh, you'll see our channel's name, so that's amazing. We made our mark. <laughs> wow, look at this. This is this is the, the cookie cat scoreboard. Mm -hmm. Wow, I like it. double, you know, double sides. That makes yeah. sense. Is mm -hmm. it double sided itself or? Oh, yeah, it has side? cookie cat. Cookie cat. Even better. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yeah, so we got, I'm guessing gems, and they want me to let you guys know that uh, some of the cards are going to be more high quality in the final. Print, we got a special, the first run ever. So if some things look a little weird, uh, it'll be better in the final version. So these are cool. Mm -hmm. These are little gems. Awesome. Tell. Yeah. And then we have our decks. I'll take one of these up here. Yeah. Let's... So these are, uh, this is act two. They mentioned they were act decks. So there's three acts, I presume. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then the other one's probably the mixture of the other cards. Is that Act 1? Do you have Act 1? It does not this? say Act 1. That's but... weird. Alright, so here's how you play the game. To start, you want to put your board at the top, and you want to put your uh, supply of jewels next to it. Then we're going to pick two Steven cards, one for Haley and one for me. Each Steven card comes with an affiliation with a gem. Haley got Garnet, and I got Pearl. And those affiliations tell you which token to use to measure your points. Since I got Pearl, I'll put that up here. There's no zero counter, so we'll just use the space right above number one. And then Haley's will go right on top of it. Now each of us are going to take our Stevens, and we're going to pull them off to the side so that we have our own little uh, space with enough room next to them that we can put more cards in the future. Because this is our stage, and you can have up to four characters on your stage, including Steven. After that, we're each going to take 10 of these gems, and we're going to keep that supply in front of our Stevens. Now, normally this setup would be a little bit different, but we're having everything face forward so that you can see all of them, no cards are off to the side or what have you. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put down our Party Crasher deck and draw three 
party crashing monsters. Now these are villains who are trying to crash Beach of Palooza, and we're going to have to fight them with the help of our band and our audience members. Now if you're wondering where we're gonna get those from, the next thing you do is draw nine cards each from your Act One deck. And then you're going to take that deck and put it in the corner. So we're going to take our Act One fusion cards and we're gonna put them right here in the middle where all of them are accessible. We don't need that extra sardonyx. Where all of them are accessible for us to use. Normally you would put these up towards the counter, but again, we have limited space and we're trying to make sure you guys can see everything just fine. So this is how you start playing the game. What we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the nine cards we have, and each of us are gonna select three of them to use in this round. There are two types of cards here. You have uh, band members, members, and then you have audience members. Audience members, you can play as many as you want, and they're free to play, and each one has special abilities that can help your band members in their fights. Band members, you can only have four of, and you can't have the same character twice. They're gonna be the ones who are attacking the party crashers. All right, so now that we have looked at our nine cards and each of us have selected three, we're going to hand each other the deck of six remaining cards, which we'll be able to use next round. And for now, we're both going to play the cards that we want. We may play two cards of the three that we've chosen. Uh-oh. Uh, so I'm going to start by playing Garnet, and to summon a character, you have to see, uh, they have this little diamond in the corner with a number on it. And you have to put that many diamonds from your own supply, one, two, three, four, five, six, and place it on that character. That's basically gonna be their ammunition for when you attack. And then when it comes to audience members, you can play as many as you want. Uh, Haley, who are you gonna play? Uh, I'll do Amethyst for now. So Amethyst has a four in the corner, so you put four diamonds on her. And then who else are you gonna play? Greg. Greg, so you're gonna put two diamonds on him. The remaining cards that we chose are going to go over near the party crashers, and these are the people being held hostage by the party crashers. Now the first thing you wanna do is go to your audience members and try and use their special abilities to help your band members. This is actually a really good special ability, but I can't use it this round, so we're gonna skip that for now. But what I can do is I can attack these monsters. Now each of these monsters have certain points you need to hit in order for them to poof so you can bubble them. That's what these bubbles are for. You have to hit all of those points. Now Garnet, as you can see, has two different attacks. One that costs three diamonds and one that costs six. The three does two damage and the six does four damage. Now when I'm attacking a monster or a villain, say I attack Aquamarine, she has one bubble here that has four damage. So I could use my six points to do four damage to that one spot. Or I could use that six damage to hit the three and the two separately. As long as it is equal to or less than, I could hit multiple bubbles at once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay that six to do four damage, and I'm gonna go for that first bubble in the corner. To signify that you've destroyed that we're gonna put one diamond over it. It says put all of them. For now, we're just gonna mark it with one so you guys can still see what's going on. And when you pop it, you get a little bonus here that says I get five victory points. Victory points are ultimately how you win the game after all three acts. All right, so I've done the damage, I've done five, and then each player with five or more audience characters loses negative two. That's an effect, but we are not there yet, so that is fine. Uh, since I used my, if you look closely at this diamond, there's a star next to it. And since I used this ability, that star activates this down here, which says gain another victory point. So I actually am going to move up to six. That is the end of my attack phase when I am all out of diamonds that I can use. I can't use the rest from my supply right now, uh, but now it is Haley's turn. Mm -hmm. So I can, I guess, use Amethyst, right? And mm. I have four, so I could use this one or this one. And looking here, I think we should just both try to go to Aquamarine, I guess. And if I use all the four, it attacks three, so I can get that one. And I guess I get a card with that? Uh, yep, you get to draw an Act 1 card and put it in your deck. Got that, got that. So I could go for 
either the Jaspers, basically. Yeah. I'll just go. For so I'm just gonna give you some advice. We are competing against each other in this game to get the most victory points. Uh, you attack this Aquamarine, which helps me because that means next round all I have to do is attack it once and I win the victory points that come with that. What are the victory points for defeating a character? So when you defeat a character, you get a bubble bonus of five victory points, or you can save one of the characters that they are holding hostage to put into your hand. Gotcha. So you want to try and make it that you're the one popping the final bubble, but we'll continue from here. There, gotcha. So, well, I guess I get that one back anyways, because once I get that one, I get the Yeah, one. Uh, the poof, uh, the attack bonus allows her to get one diamond from the supply. So also, for Greg, if he has no, you know, gems on stage, he might join your audience, so. Now, last round what we did was we handed each other the decks of six cards. So now what we're going to do is from that deck of six, we are each going to choose three cards and we give the remaining three back to the other player. Or in Haley's case, since she had to draw an extra card, she'll have four to hand over to me. So now what we're going to do is, and let's do this one at a time so we don't confuse, I'm going to put, we'll both take one card and put it in the pool. You can put your card there too. We're both gonna put Mayor Dewey in this place to be uh, held hostage by those party crashers. And then you're gonna play your audience and, now audience members are free to play and they give you special abilities, but we'll use that at the start of our attack phase. Uh, Haley played Sapphire and that's going to cost three jewels from her supply. So now we begin our second round attack phase, and what I want to do first is go over these audience members. Jenny gives me two more diamonds, and then Nanafwa and Mr. Fryman both allow me to put as many of these diamonds as I want onto one character card. So if I want, I could put as many of these as I want onto Garnet and use those to attack this round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Fryman's ability to take three of my diamonds to use on Garnet to use her second attack, which will do two damage to Aquamarine. This gives me two bonus points, but it will also give me five for the bubbling bonus. It was at eight, right? So that's 15. Because I defeated her. Uh, each player with five or more audience characters loses two victory points, but that doesn't apply to us. So now that we've defeated Aquamarine, we're gonna put her in this bubbled pile in the corner and draw a new party crasher for us to start fighting in the next round. And that will be the end of my attack phase. Action. So since I have um, some energy or some gems on Sapphire, I can just go uh, use this three to attack. And uh, this is a two power of two, so I can just do that. And that will give me uh, one of these, and finally my first point, guys. This is great. And that will end Act Two. No, which... no. Oh, round. I oh. get. Sorry, Greg's special ability since he's an audience member gets one, and yeah, there we go now. So now what we do for the final round of Act One is we take a look at the remaining cards, and once again we choose three cards. Once again, we're going to take those cards, and since I have four, I'm actually going to immediately discard one, which will be the ruby, if you want to take that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Greg as a character, and I'm going to put Lion in my audience, and put Connie in the hostage situation. So now I'm going to go, and I'm going to play a ruby with my sapphire. And additionally, I'm going to do a Ronaldo. No, wait, actually, I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm gonna do Onion and then put Ronaldo as a hostage. Awesome. So this would begin my attack phase. The first thing I would do is use my audience member abilities, which is plus two from Lion and plus two from Jenny, which means that I now have five more gems that I can distribute among my characters using Fryman and Manafwa. I'm going to use Fryman's ability to put four more of these gems onto my Garnet, giving her a total of six so I can use her attack. I'm going to use them to attack Topaz by doing four damage here and two damage here. Oh no, because it's a... sorry, I use six points to do four damage, so I'll do that. That activates my special ability for plus one, plus four more for hitting that point, so that'll be five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I get rid of all of those extra 
gems on my Garnet. And I'm going to do the same thing with my Greg. I'm going to attack uh, using a special ability to do one damage here. That gives me one gem back. And if he has no gems, he may join the audience. And that will be the end of my attack phase. So first, I'm let's talk about Onion here. And when played, I may take one gem from each other's each player's supply. So give me yours, please. One. one? Jesus, yeah. rude. <laughs> it's Onion, you know? So, and if I have them at the end, then it might be trouble. But for now, we're good. So the interesting thing here is I was able to get both Ruby and Sapphire into my, you know, current playing area. And uh, if I have a Sapphire in play, I may find a Garnet. Uh, so, and put in for free and I'll get the gems for free. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go and find one. There she is. So put these back. So you discard your ruby and sapphire because if you have them both, you can fuse them into a garnet. And you get the gems from this supply. Yeah, right? yeah. And right. then do you think I get to play garnet immediately? Uh, you can't attack with it, I would say. You might want to also use your PD ability to add more... Uh, Tamethyst, maybe. Yeah. And don't forget your Steven gives your garnet a bonus. Oh. Wow, thanks. <laughs> There's a lot to keep in mind with this. Okay, so I have plus one attack for Garnet. So if I do, I could do, go here for two gems, right? And I can do that, because it's now three. So that's... That gives you a plus two bonus. Yes. Um, also, every time I hit a party crasher, I get one from Greg. Then I can use actually use PD, I think, to move some as many gems as I want, correct? Yep. Back onto it. And so Amethyst can do one hit with well sorry, with two gems she can hit one. This. And I think it goes down. Awesome. So that means you uh, don't forget to take the bonus, so it would be one gem. So now that you've defeated the Party Crasher, you get to either gain five victory points, or you can rescue one of the characters from the uh, from their hostage situation and uh, put it back into your hand. So Haley's going to take those five victory points, and once again, we're going to replace the poofed Party Crasher with a new one, the Obelisk. Now we're entering what's called Act 2, where we kind of repeat this game, but again with a new deck. I'm going to hand Haley nine cards for her to use, and we're once again going to choose the three that we want to play this next round. So now that we've chosen our three cards, we're going to hand over the remaining deck of six cards to each other. And I'm going to put Yellowtail in the prison, and I'm going to summon a new Garnet, and an amethyst. Now you can't have two of the same character on the field, but what you can do is upgrade the previous character. So you can play this character for free, and they automatically get the amount of jewels needed to summon them from the reserve. So it's a really great way to refresh your character. It also gives them an attack boost. They're definitely worth more damage now that we're in Act 2. So, now my lion is going to give me two more, and Jenny is going to give me two more as well, which means that I can summon an Amethyst with a power of five. Now, this is where the game gets really interesting. As you saw before, Haley was able to fuse her Ruby and Sapphire, but that wasn't how fusion works traditionally in this game. What you can do is, during your attack round, is fuse two characters who have the ability to fuse, like Amethyst and Garnet do, to become Sugalite. When they do, you take the amount of attack power necessary from the existing gems in order to attack. This gem special ability is you ignore all negative effects caused by a crasher attack, which is great because I have five audience characters and don't want to have to get rid of them if I start attacking Topaz. Now, Sugalite's attack is a cost of six, so I'm going to go one, two, uh, three, four, and five, six from Amethyst and Garnet in order to attack Topaz for three here and three here. That allows me to draw a new Act 2 card into my deck as well as get one victory point as well as get two more jewels 
for my reserve. Now at the end of the turn, my Sugalite is just going to go back, but for now we're going to let Haley finish her attack phase. One thing we forgot to do was at the beginning of Act 2, there is a new fusion that enters play, Stevani, that will allow you to fuse your Steven with a Connie character. Now Haley's going to just go through her attack phase. Yeah, so I'm just going to discard, put put Watermelon Steven in the, uh, you know, hostage. hostage. Yeah, there we go. And then I got these two new dudes, uh, Ronaldo and Lars. So then I can just begin my turn, more or less. So Lars gives me two. Um, let's see. One play, immediately move Ronaldo to another play char player's character. So um, this actually will not make a difference for him because he already has Mr. Fryman, but I just didn't know what to do. So uh, whatever, that's fine. Uh, but then I can do PD potentially or just attack already. So let's see. Okay, so now I'm just going to use this three gems to attack Topaz here, who will get me, I guess, another card, correct? Yep. And then Greg gives one to whenever I get a hit. And then I did not do that. So that may be Maybe it. Maybe attacking with Amethyst? Oh yes, I could do that. So, well, let me get rid of Topaz. Yeah. So you also get the five point bonus for defeating Topaz. The new party crasher comes into play. Mm -hmm. And then I could potentially attack with Amethyst as well. Um, so I have two, I can do a one hits just anywhere there. And I'll just get that back. So there you go. So now that we are both done with our attack round, Sugalite is actually going to return to the fusion pool to be used again for whoever wants to fuse next round. From there, the game pretty much continues exactly in the same way. We have two more rounds for Act 2, and then after that, we bring out an entirely new deck for Act 3, which is of course going to have even more powerful and new characters. Peridot, for instance, wasn't in Act 1 or Act 2 as far as we've seen. In addition to this, Act 3 comes with a new fusion as well, Smoky Quartz. There are three rounds to Act 3, just like before, and at the end of it, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the game. So we just played a few rounds, and oh, what do you think of it, Deep Cut? Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I like uh, card and board games like this, so it was actually a lot more fun than I was expecting it to be. Uh, you know, with Steven Universe, it's a show for kids, uh, but this game is ages 10 and up, and it is a little complex. It takes a little bit of time to figure out what's actually going on, uh, but once you have that down, it starts to move a lot faster as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a little more uh, rules intensive than I was expecting, but you know, like it says, it says 10 and up, so I think once you see how we play it and then maybe read the rules a bit, you can definitely pick it up pretty quickly compared to us where we had to even come, like do a little practice beforehand. Yeah. What was interesting to me was how they were able to create a very light premise. The game is based off the episode Steven and the Stevens where Steven is playing in a band with himself. Uh, in this version, Stevens are competing against each other and serious villains from the show are attacking. So it's not characters like townies throwing weapons or anything. I like that they kept the townies in the audience and they kept the gems in the actual band for fighting. It was a fun way to make it both lighthearted and still kind of action-y. Yeah, it's a pretty good game. Um, any other final thoughts? Those are my final thoughts. Okay, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Cryptozoic, for sending this to me and uh, it will be out, I'm guessing, in the summer. I'm not 100% sure if they have a complete concrete date yet. So uh, if we do, we'll make sure to tell you guys. But until then, thank you for watching. See you next time.